Rank in order from largest to smallest the densities of objects A, B, and C and explain. Looking at these objects, what we want is the ratio of the overall volume to how much volume is actually submerged. So before we talk about these three, let's just talk about the concept in general. If you were to take an air mattress, fill it up with air, and throw it on a pool, obviously it's going to float. And if you try to pull it under the water, it's going to be really hard. Why? It's not because of the weight of it. It could be really heavy, but since it's so full of air, the density of it is lighter than water and it'll float. If you were to take a dumbbell and you chuck the dumbbell in the water, obviously it's going to sink to the bottom. Why? Because it's more dense than the water. So with these ones, we want to know how much of it is submerged in the water in relationship to the overall volume of it. So with A, it probably has, you know, 70 to 80, something like that. Percent of it is in the water compared to the whole thing. B, probably like 10 to 20 percent is actually submerged in the water, whereas C has roughly, let's say, half of it is submerged in the water. So using the same logic as the, the air mattress and the dumbbell, or we could even change it, let's say they're the same size, an air mattress and a sheet of steel. Obviously the sheet of steel is going to sink to the bottom. So with these ones, since A, it's more submerged in the water in relationship to its overall volume is going to be the most dense. Object C, since half of it's in the water, will say that the density of that one is next. And then for object B, of course, very little of it compared to the overall volume is submerged in the water, so that one will be the least dense.